Hello, welcome back to the Tekimaki channel. Today we're going to continue on our series about console. We are using console service discovery in order to register the menu service. In this video, we are going to work with the order service. So the order service is going to consume information from console in order to determine what are the URL and the port of the menu service. But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe and also click on the notification buttons in order to receive more videos. All right, so now let's go to the order service. So here you can see that we have the base address and the base address is pointing to this hard-coded URL. We're going to create another service that is going to retrieve the URL and port details from console. Okay, so I'm going to create this class over here. So public class console registry service. And in this constructor, let's just move this to a separate class. In the constructor, first, we need to declare here a console client. And here, let's just uh, inject that console client. We need also to make sure that we have this console client on the startup.cs. And here in the startup.cs, I'm going to inject the iConsole client. So let me go back here to the console registry service and change that to iConsole client because it's the interface for sure, right? So let's go and services.add singleton. So iConsole client, console client. Perfect. So we are going to inject the concrete instance console client for the iConsole client over here. Let's go back to the app settings and define the console URL and port there. So console and address, okay? So we're going to retrieve the data from this specific parameter here in the app settings. So getting back to the startup, let's just define a second override of this implementation, which is the one that has an implementation factory. So service provider, and then we have the definition over here. Let's type new console client. So we are creating the instance as it's a factory and see what are the possible uh, things that we can pass on this, right? So first thing is this config. So this config is the one that contains all the information that it needs in order to communicate with the console. So let's define this config. So config, and then let's define this uh, config object as the following. Let's do config.address. And let's define this config.address with the information that we get from the configuration. So let's just uh, do the following. Let's get the configuration instance that usually is defined in the startup. So let's just put configuration. And there is an easy way to access information in kind of a sequencing the same sequence that we have here in terms of a property and inside of this property we have another properties and all of this by using the square brackets so you put square brackets and inside of the key right you need to define console which is the name of the section that you're entering and then also the name of the property that you're trying to retrieve which in this case is console address this guy here is expecting a uri so you do new uri and then you put the console address inside of this declaration. So it's receiving the string with the full URL and converting that to a URI. I don't need these uh, brackets here. So now that we have the singleton instance with the proper factory, let's go back to the console registry service and start to use this iConsole client over here. So first thing is that we need to set this to the console client. And after we do this, we also need to create a method where we are going to retrieve the information about the menu service, in this case, product resource. So let's just define a constant here. So I'm going to define a public const string and service name. And the name of the service is actually product. Okay, so now that we have defined the service name, let's just go ahead here and do console client dot health. So we are only going to get the healthy services. At this moment, we don't have any health API in the menu. So in this case, whenever there is a service responding, it's always healthy. But in this case, it's important to use the health because in the future, if we add any type of health check and special API, we are going to be covered here. And then we're going to get service. We need to pass what is the service that we are looking for, service name. So let's just specify here that we have a service. For now, for simplicity, let's just use the result, okay? So this can contain one or more services. So if service, yeah, so we have service.response, 
which will contain one or more instances of the service that contains this name. So service.response.length. Service is going to be different than new and also service.response in this case is also different than new. And now we have service.response.length is greater than zero. In our case, we are only concerned about one instance of that, which is the one that we're going to use to directly communicate to it. So we're not doing like any load balancing or other type of implementation just yet. Okay, so then I realized that I'm actually working on the constructors. So let's define a method for that to public. Let's return our URI and get service, right? So in this method get service, we are going to do this logic that I was talking about. Let's just return that response. So I'm going to store this somewhere. So let's call it for now the query result. So service query result. Let's define a service instance, which is going to be the service query result dot response. It's going to contain probably multiple services. And then let's just uh, return the services. The first one right, on this service, which is going to be the zero, then dot service dot what is the address yes the address is the information that we are looking for so we are looking for the address and we are also looking for the port so let's just create a string and do interpolation so then we can actually compose this url so let's define here services zero dot service dot port so here we're going to define a new uri uh, if we haven't been able to find any service let's just return new so in this case in order to make it very simple, right? Let's just put zero here. So we have just one service, service.service, .service, and here service.service. .service. Okay, so now with this method available, we can consume and we can use that inside of our proxy class. So if you remember from the previous videos, we created a proxy class in order to access the menu. So, okay, now let's go back to the startup.cs. And here, there are two things that are actually missing one is the definition of this service that we are creating so let's add another singleton and this singleton is going to be the i console registry service so console registry service so let's just define here an interface let's create the interface in a new file let's move this to the services folder all right so let's specify here uri get service perfect so getting back here, let's just make sure that in the console registry service, we have iConsul registry service. Getting back to the startup, now we are going to finally use the console registry service in order to, instead of using the hard-coded URI, we are going to use that from the console. So simple as that. Let's just define here inside of our client code, client, but also service provider. The service provider is the one that is going to help me retrieve an instance of the console registry service. So a uh, registry service, console registry service, and then I'll go service provider dot. Uh, maybe I inverted that. So let's just define service provider first and then the client. So service provider dot get service and let's specify what is the service that we are retrieving so get required service actually and the required service will have the instance of i console registry service and perfect here we have the concrete instance in this console registry service of the console registry service so let's use this in order to replace the call that we have for this new ri over here console registry service dot get service it is going to retrieve the service from console instead of using a hard-coded information so now let's just test it I'm going to put a breakpoint here in order for us to understand a little bit how it is going to retrieve that data for us. Let's go back here. I'm specifying this breakpoint. We created a method that inside of the order controller, whenever you are trying to add or update an order, it will use the product service proxy. In order to use the product service proxy, it is going to actually trigger the HTTP client because it needs to inject the HTTP client in the implementation of the product service proxy. So at this moment, it is the only moment where we are going to have this breakpoint hit. Okay, so let's just test it. So I'm going to go back here to the swagger, try it out. I can specify any parameter that I want because it's not going to be so relevant in our case. So let's click in execute. 
By doing this, it's going to trigger the breakpoint, and here we're going to see the service provider in action, injecting for us here in this console registry service an instance of the console registry service for us. So let's just continue here and see. Let's click on step over. When we step over, we can see here that we have the console registry service. And then let's see what is in the base address after we set it. So I'll click here again in the step over. And then we actually have an error. This is invalid URI. The URI scheme is not valid. Oh, definitely, absolutely. We have the address, so perfect. At least we saw that it, this is working. We have the 10.0.75.1, which is where our service is running. And we have the port, which is 5001. If you go back to the menu, you're going to see that that's exactly the information that it was stored in the console. So if we go back here in the console, we are going to see here inside of the product that we have 10075 and then we have the 5001. That's perfect. The data is okay, but uh, the URL format that I'm putting there is actually not valid at all, right? I'm not putting HTTP in this URL. So let me hit stop here, and then I'm going to put HTTP. So now we actually have a URL. So let's just click here in timaki.orders and then see it taking effect. So this time I'm going to really try to submit something. So let me just remove this order ID from here. I'm going to also remove the order item ID. I'm going to put 10 as a quantity. And then the product ID, I'm going to get a valid product ID. So let's just go back here and also put a breakpoint on the order controller so we can see step by step. Cool. So I'm going to get back here, click in execute. Let's take a look. Yes, it's getting the required service. This part we have already seen, right? So uh, let's do a step into, all right, it's getting the configuration from the console client in order to retrieve the data from console and then continue. Now we have the console registry service. Let's get the base address. And then you guys can see here in the logic. So here we have the service. You can see that this service is running on 10.0.75.1. And then you have additional information, the ID and everything, the port, and so on and so forth. Here, we're going to build the URI based on this two information. We're going to see on the order controller what is the effect on the flow over here. Cool. So now we entered in the error update. And inside of the error update, you can see that it is going to retrieve the information from the service proxy. Because now the service proxy has the URL and port that was retrieved from console. After this, let's continue, okay? So now we were able to see that we are able to communicate with console and retrieve the information about our menu service. So that's exactly what we wanted to accomplish in this video. Here you can see the 204 response also as well. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to focus on simplifying this service proxy even more. So I hope to see you again on the next video.